I think I'm having my first real Braxton Hicks contraction right now. I am 27 weeks, almost 28 weeks. And I'm literally feeling, I'm feeling it right now. Like, if you don't know what Braxton Hicks contractions are, they're like, your body practicing for real contractions, real labor. And it's like, it's like a tightening of your tummy, basically. Yeah, this is a real one because it's, it's like, you kind of feel it progress and tighten, 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 and then it holds for a little bit. And then progressively it will loosen back up. That is what a contraction feels like. It literally feels like your inside, like your tummy, goes from loose to tight, 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 and then it'll hold a tightness, and then it'll release. And real contractions is that process of tightening and loosening, tightening and loosening over and over again. You see, and, and now it's loosening, like now it's letting go. Um, but that was the first one, oh my goodness. Um, I think I felt Braxton Hicks earlier in my last pregnancy but then again like my labor last time was like different from the perspective of like I went all natural so I had already kind of in my mind understood what contractions were going to feel like so that also gave me more confidence to be able to withstand like the uncomfort I don't like using the word pain because pain is relative and it's all about mind over matter when it comes to birthing, especially natural birthing. And so one of the activities that I learned actually when I was doing birthing classes before I had Sarai, which I did not have Sarai naturally, I had Sarai in a hospital with an epidural and she was a 26 hour labor, um, which I, intend, I intended on going natural with but when it came down to it, I was in labor for 19 hours, no sleep, I was hungry, I was tired, and did not have the willpower to push on my own and kind of get through it by myself, which I feel no types of ways about. Like, I genuinely believe that you have to listen to your own body and whatever you need to do, whether that's getting an epidural, whether that's getting a C-section, whether that's birthing naturally, whatever you need to do, you do, mama, because you are in charge of your body and how this baby comes out of you, no one else. So I am one of those people that's like, the only really like popular birth experience I haven't experienced is getting a c-section so i can't really speak to those experiences even though i know so many moms go through that but i have had different births and birth plans and prenatal care with each one of my pregnancies and so i can speak to just how different your hospital experience can be from your birth center experience to your home birth experience um getting treatment prenatal treatment from an OBGYN versus getting treatment from a midwife, getting treatment from a group of midwives. Like I've kind of experienced multiple different things. So I like to share my perspective on birth and pregnancy because I feel like I can speak to a lot of different things that you might be curious about. So when it came to my first labor, I got an epidural. When it came to my second labor, I did not have an epidural, obviously. I had an unmedicated water birth, but one of the activities that I did when I was in birthing classes for Sarai was this, this activity where the person that was teaching the class had actually been a doula for 30 years. And so she actually infused a ton of natural birthing techniques and things into our birthing class, which was so awesome because that's really what like got me tapped into like this other way of experiencing birth. And um, so she had us hold ice in our hands. And you can do this at home right now, like just to see what your experience is like. But essentially you hold onto the ice for a minute. And when it comes to real contractions, those contractions are no longer than 60 seconds to 90 seconds 
fully. So contractions, real contractions feel like a wave. So they, they feel like a increase in uncomfort and tightening and may move from like your front tummy to your back, depending on how you labor. Sometimes people labor in their back more than their front. Um, I've experienced both um, where it kind of moves from the front of me to the back of me and then wraps around physically. But essentially your contraction gets intense and then it hits a peak and then it will slowly come down. And that whole duration of time is anywhere between 60 to 90 seconds. And it kind of varies based on like which phase of labor you're into. So sometimes those waves will get quicker and sometimes those waves are a little bit longer, but they won't exceed like 60 to 90 seconds. That's what you can keep in your mind. So when you're holding this ice and you hold it for 60 seconds, you literally feel the physical sensation of like, okay, first 20 seconds, good. First 30 seconds, okay, it's getting a little bit more uncomfortable. When you're at that, you know, 45 second point, and you're like, ooh, this thing is cold, it's dripping, it's, it's uncomfortable. But then when you let it go and you feel your hand warm back up, that is kind of an example of what contractions feel like. Like they feel like this wave. And so when I was prepping for my second labor, I did a lot of like visualizing in my mind and in my body of like riding that wave and visualizing like oceans and water because water comforts me, which is why I chose to do a water birth to begin with. And so like I felt very safe and at peace in water. And so I knew that just hearing waves watching waves, um, feeling water physically on my body, those sensations and those physical things actually had a really great impact on my ability to find peace and safety in those intense contractions as they came and went. And so even now at 27 weeks, I'm almost in my third trimester. This is the time when you start to really, okay, you're bumping around, all right? There's no mistaking it now. Um, Braxton Hicks are starting, which means that my body is prepping. My body is getting ready. And with each pregnancy, you know, your body gets more and more used to birthing. So I'm interested to see how long my labor is even going to be with this third baby, because I went from 26 hours with Sarai to nine ish hours with Micah, which really, truly, I had a lot of preterm labor with Micah like I was having contractions for like two to three weeks on and off that never really took off but they were like they felt like real contractions and I knew because I had felt real contractions before uh but they would stall out and so it drove me a little crazy okay it drove me a little crazy because Micah was an overdue baby he was well I wouldn't say overdue he was 41 weeks so Sarai was born at 38 weeks. So in my mind, when I was getting ready to have Micah, I was like, okay, 38 weeks, that's, you know, that's, that's my timeline. But when I went to 39 and 40 and 41, I was like, yo, this baby got to come out. Like this baby got to come out like right now. And so I, I was also experiencing a lot of contractions. So just mentally, I was just like, oh my gosh, is it starting? Is it starting? And then it wouldn't. And so finally, when I hit my 41 week mark, I went to see my midwife and they ended up sweeping my mem sweeping my membrane and it was crazy because that's technically not an induction of labor but it does help speed things up a little bit it's a more natural way of doing it technically it's not 100% natural because your body should release the mucus plug on its own but you can technically go in and break that mucus plug so that labor continues and kind of starts. You could definitely do research on this, but I had my membrane swept and then literally went into labor, active labor, like maybe 30, 45 minutes later. Like I really believe that's when my labor started because I started feeling contractions, but they just weren't super intense. They didn't get super intense in like that 511 like 
every five minutes for one minute. Uh, what is that? I can't remember. I'm going to have to put it here. But there's some formula. <laughs> I have to, I'm going to have to brush up on it. But there's a formula that you can follow when you know it's time to go in. And so I hit that threshold. And so we went to the birth center um, around 8 o'clock that night. And then I had Micah at... I think like 2.30 in the morning the next, in that night or early, early the next day. So really, truly, I took a nap and everything like till midnight, maybe around 12.45, 1 o'clock. I actually woke up because the contractions were so intense and that's when it all like hit, like hit a new level. So really, um, I was managing, you know, through my contractions for most of my labor very well, walking around on the medicine ball in the tub. Uh, it wasn't until that last hour and a half or so where it was like, okay, we are like seven to, we, we are, we are like eight centimeters dilated. We nine centimeters, like we right there at the edge. And I literally pushed maybe once. Like, because y'all, if you are, if you've ever had a baby before and you know what it means when it's like you feel the ring of fire, that is when the head of the baby is exiting you and you can feel it because that's the hardest part of the baby. Everything else really bends and moves to come out very easily. But that head, and my son had a big head, okay? <laughs> That head, I knew because I actually tore when I had my my daughter Sarai. Because this is the thing. When I had my epidural, I couldn't connect as much with my body and understanding where I, what phase I was at and listening to those natural cues. You lose some of that whenever you get an epidural or any sort of medication during birth and labor. But... I had, I was still feeling it. So I was still feeling it, but I didn't understand that concept of like the ring of fire until I had her and I realized that I tore a bit. So I had to get stitches and stuff like that. Um, but when I had my water birth, one of the great advantages of giving birth in water is that there's lubrication, okay? So not only are you very lubricated down there by the time that pushing phase comes, but I knew that as soon as I felt that, I was going to push like hell. <laughs> like I was going to push as much as I could. And so literally it happened just like that. Like I was like, as soon as I felt that ring of fire, I pushed that baby out. Mark picked him up. Like literally Mark caught him and that was it. Um, and then we birthed the placenta and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, you know, I had to mentally prepare myself for, you know, birthing naturally, but it was so doable, which is why I chose this even more, you know, not even more natural because I did everything naturally with my last birth, but like literally doing everything at home because I recognized that like I didn't need a lot of things. Like I'm blessed to be, you know, in a position where I am low risk and I don't have any major health issues or anything like that, that would inhibit me from being able to birth at home without a ton of assistance. And I'm, I'm just very grateful for that because it allows me to take full ownership and authority over my birth in a way that if I did have medical issues or any sort of medical interventions that I would not have because you do every time I mean even the fact that like I didn't even have an IV at the birth center like I did not even you don't even get an IV so you are literally not hooked up to anything and that is a totally different experience than when you're in the hospital and you have to lay on your back and you have to be in the bed and you have to do certain things when you get an epidural or when you have an IV and that's the first thing that they do in the hospital when you get there and you're going into labor is like they stick an IV in you. Um, and so, yeah, so also if you're wondering about like natural birthing and learning more about this concept, there is an incredible documentary on, I think it's on Prime, Amazon Prime, called uh, The Business of Being Born. So good. Y'all remember who Ricky Lake is. She was like a, 
a talk show host back in the day, back in the 90s, but she is like one of the narrators or the narrator of the documentary. And it is so worth a watch, okay? I learned so much from there. It confirmed so many things for me. I tell all of my friends who are interested in natural birthing um, to watch that documentary. I know also on Hulu, there's a new documentary called Aftershock, specifically about black um, mothers and mortality rates and things like that in hospitals. For me right now, I'm choosing not to watch Aftershock only because a lot of my fear for my first pregnancy actually came from the numbers and the real risks of being a black woman going into labor in a hospital. And I had a severe fear of dying before I gave birth and I have been delivered from that. I've overcome that. So I already know that at this time, it's not a good thing for me to watch because I don't want to reignite any unwarranted fear. Uh, but it is something that if you don't know a lot about what really goes on um, in these hospital environments, you should totally give it a watch. I will end up watching it just after I have this baby <laughs> uh, because I know it's it's going to be so good. Uh, but I encourage you to watch both. Uh, just be mindful. Like the business of being born documentary is not going to trigger you. I don't believe I wasn't triggered by the business of being born and I watched it for the first time when I was pregnant. Um, as far as the aftershock, I don't know. And I don't want, personally, I'm not going to take a chance right now. Um, oh, baby's moving. <laughs> That's all the other thing. We've had lots and lots of movement, y'all. The past few weeks, he has been super active and just like letting me know that he is, he is here. He's healthy. He's doing good. And yeah, so we've been doing good. I've been feeling good. Um, getting a little bit more tired. I think I shared that in my last check-in but yeah things are going great and um we're heading into fall so i'm excited because that means that we're closer to due date and yeah i'm just feeling good so let's go ahead and pray real quick this is a second trimester prayer lord we thank you for your continued grace your continued provision and your continued help in getting from stage to stage in this pregnancy god i thank you for the heartbeat that is growing and thriving in me now lord i thank you for every single open ear and heart that is listening and watching this video right now god whether they are pregnant currently desiring to be pregnant or reminiscing on their pregnancy lord i thank you that you have given us women the ability to carry life and to partner with you to bring life into this physical place god what an honor it is to partner with you in such a beautiful way lord i thank you for my midwife to you have sent her to us to be a guide and a representation of you on this earth so i thank you lord i thank you for what she said to us the other day in our prenatal appointment which was that she sees birthing babies as an opportunity to shake hands with you and I just thought that was so good because what an honor it is for her to be able to experience birthing with so many moms and so many families on a regular basis because truly bringing life into this world and experiencing the entrance of life into this world is unmatched it is like nothing else and i just thank you for what she's been able to do god i thank you for protecting her for giving her peace in her heart for giving her joy and protecting and taking care of her family and her babies we thank you for all of these things god and we pray that whoever sees this video is blessed and continues to have a piece of you in them that sparks joy and peace and comfort only in your way. In Jesus' name, please pray. Amen. All right, y'all. See you in the next one. Bye.